Howdy all. Um, Kyle here with the Glam Crown Project. Just wanted to give you updates uh, on the DNA that we're ordering um, and kind of the process, what we're doing it, how we're doing it, and kind of why we're doing it the way we are. Um, it's been really fun and exciting for me to get to talk to different people who are uh, kind of in the cutting edge as to how you design and synthesize DNA. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit of that uh, the cool stuff that I learned with you guys. So let's get started. Um, to give you a little bit of background, we'll talk a little, first a little bit about how things have been cloned um, traditionally. Essentially, what you've got to do is you have your different pieces that you want to put together. Um, you've got your plant parts here, um, your glowing bacteria parts here, um, and then kind of the vector, which is what you put all these things into there. Um, normally, what you would have had to have done um, is basically take and use PCR, which is a way of copying DNA, um, and do it in such a way that you built these little, you synthesize these little tiny strips of DNA um, that allow you to amplify up very specific regions. Um, so in this case, we're picking the tRNA uh, and tRNAi uh, regions of the chloroplast, which have been shown previously to be really good spots to uh, put genes into the chloroplast, if you want to put genes into the chloroplast. Um, and so what we'd have to do is basically design these primers, um, and then also have little overhangs on them um, that would allow us to basically cut those pieces of DNA out. Um, and what you have to do is basically go through a, a bit of a painstaking effort to make sure that the vector that you're trying to put all these pieces, assemble all these pieces into, um, don't have these uh, restriction enzyme sites in the wrong place, but have them in the right place. You also want to make sure that these restriction enzymes aren't in the middle of the DNA sequence that you're trying to make, uh, which is kind of, or that you're trying to amplify out. So you wouldn't want to have, cut your piece of DNA in the middle when you want the whole thing, which is kind of annoying. So it takes a fair bit of thought to think through that process. Um, so essentially you Spend a fair bit of time designing the primers that you need to amplify out your DNA. Um, in this case, you want three parts from the chloroplast, uh, the insertion site that you want to put your genes of interest into, uh, a promoter, which is basically what's going to turn on our uh, glowing bacteria uh, genes um, in the right place, um, go through um, a PCR reaction, which normally they're, they're okay unless you have to troubleshoot them, which takes a bit of uh, uh, time to deal with. Um, out of this, then, you should get three parts, the tRNA, tRNI, and the PRRN part. That's from the plant chloroplast. Then we want to go to the glowing bacteria and pull out the genes that we want there. Um, since it's the glowing bacteria, we want those glowing genes, so that lux operon is what those are called. Uh, again, we'd want to design primers to basically amplify out that, uh, those lux genes all in one whack. Um, and again, you'd want to do a put a fair bit of thought into designing those to make sure that those restriction enzyme sites are compatible with all the other pieces that you've got um, and not cut your locks off around the middle of it. So with all these different parts, hopefully, if you've done it all correctly, which is not always the case, <laughs> you should get something like this, where you've got your different parts that you've amplified out using PCR, um, and when you go to cut them with restriction enzymes, they should then be compatible, essentially where you cut here, and there should be an overhang that would allow you to cut these two and then paste specifically tRNA to PR in, um, in the right way. The way I have done this um, is essentially doing each part of at a single time. So you cut and paste TRN, uh, TRNA with PRRN, that's one set of experiments. Then you cut and paste PRRN with the TRNA, PRRN piece with the LUX, and then so on and so forth. Um, so it's a step-by-step -step ap approach, resulting in at least, in this case, one, two, three, four, five steps, uh, which is, I mean, not bad, but it turns out there are better ways to do it. Um, and one of the interesting ways that people are thinking about doing it is basically having the same sort of cut sites um, with different what are called overhangs um, to allow the DNA to come together in a very specific sort of way. Um, and so essentially what you do is instead of doing five different steps or five different reactions in one tube essentially, you throw all of these parts in and they're designed in such a way that with one restriction enzyme you cut them all um, and then you can paste them all back together. And out of that process, you should end up with the right thing. The tRNA, promoter, lux, tRNI, in your vector. And the really cool thing 
um, that's starting to happen now is you're making these modular so that if the tRNA A um, tRNI insertion site is not exactly what you want, you basically design this whole thing in such a way that you can pop out these parts and exchange them for a different one. Or let's say we want to use a different Lux operon. Um, let's say we want to use a Lux operon from uh, Vibrio Harveri instead of Vibrio Fisheri. We could basically have this piece here, or have these other pieces here, um, and then swap out a different Lux operon for that. Essentially making it much more um, efficient um, and a lot quicker to go through different designs uh, of DNA, different constructs, um, which should allow you to uh, give you the best chance of getting a nice, bright, glowing uh, plant, or whatever project you're working on, kind of be able to iterate things and do things faster. Um, so I don't, I'm really excited. It was really fun to get to talk to people about um, uh, the way they're thinking about uh, doing cloning and doing DNA design um, nowadays. A lot of has changed um, in the recent years. Uh, so I wanted to basically share that with you guys and kind of bring you guys along um, uh, with what I've learned. So, cool. That is all I have for today. Um, I hope you guys um, enjoyed the little update here. And we'll keep you posted the more we uh, learn and uh, the more we figure out. So, thanks. Bye-bye.